कितने कनिष्ठ है जिसमें परमेश्वर की आत्मा की आन जलता था वो बूझने लगा मैंने कहा है प्रभु क्या कुछ होता है Many pastors and leaders and others I had heard have gone off into some lifestyle that is totally contrary to the purpose and plan of God. कितने परमेश्वर की सेवक लोग हैं जिनके बारे में मैंने सुना जो एक समय बड़े लोलिता से प्रभु की सेवा करते रहे बल्कि अब वो इतना भटक के दूर चले गए परमेश्वर। I said how can this be Lord? मैं कहता हूँ ये परमेश्वर ये कैसे ये सब होता? How can this be? ये कैसे हो सकता है? Where is the fire? वो आत्मा की आग कहाँ है? Where is the fire of God? परमेश्वर की वो आग कहाँ है? And when the fire of God is gone, जब वो आग बुझता है, the church is reduced to having services, just services and services. अब कहीं से अब मैं खाली सफाई नहीं होती है, वो भी कम होने लगा। But we don't need more services. We need the power of God to come down. We need the fire of God to come down. In Matthew chapter three, John the Baptist stood in the cold waters of the Jordan River. यहन्ना बंदिश मंदिर नाला उस यहन्ना नदी के पास खड़े हुए। John the Baptist who came to baptize for the repentance of sin। यहन्ना बंदिश मंदिर देने वाला जो आया बंदिश मंदिर देने के लिए उन्हें जो अपने पापों से मन फिरा। And the scripture says many people came out to him। अब वचन कहता है कि बहुत से लोग उनके पास आए। And he baptized them। अब वो यहन्ना बंदिश मंदिर देने वाला उन्हें बंदिश मंदिर दिया। And then one day, अब एक दिन Standing in the cold Jordan River, उस नदी के पास खड़े हुए, John the Baptist saw the coming of Christ. यहाँना बपतिस्मा देखा प्रवीष्य मसीह को आना, and he saw the Lamb of God begin to walk close to him. वो देखता है कि परमेश्वर की मेहमान उसके करीब आता है, and he told the people, अब वो लोगों से कहा, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. देख परमेश्वर की वो मेहमान जो संसार के पापों को लेने के लिए आया है. He said, "I baptize you with water." Yehuda baptisma dena wala kaita dek mai tumhe pani se baptisma. For repentance, jo pastata karne ke wala. But after me, there is one coming who is more powerful than I am. Balki mere baad mein aur bhi samarthi wala aata hai. Who said those I am not fit to carry? Jinke juti mein usi yog nahi ho uthane ke liye. And listen what he said. Asune wo kya kaita hai? And the church today needs a fresh baptism of the Holy Spirit and fire. Because many hearts have grown cold. The Bible warned us of this. It said in the last days, many hearts will grow cold. By just saying we had a wonderful time together. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But there's no fire. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. We must have the fire of God. In John 16 verse 8, 
looking and saying, I'm happy to see you. And it's entertaining the presence of a living God. I was in South America and I was preaching in another area at a crusade and there was a brother in a, a very desperate, poor, forsaken place who called the coordinator and said, could you please come and hold a crusade? There's not been one held in this area. He said the people are desperate. There were two churches in this area. A small Catholic church. And one small Pentecostal church. A tiny Pentecostal church. And we told the Pentecostal pastor we will come. The week before we were to come there. After the church service one morning. That Sunday morning before we were coming the following week. When the service was over. And the people walked out of the, the church building. The area there was ruled by two gangs. Two gangs. And they had a gunfight out in the, in the street. And three people were killed in front of the church. Two church members and one of the gang members. Right there. He called me on the telephone. And he said, if you don't want to come, we understand because this is the situation that we have here. I said, brother, there's no place on the face of the earth that needs Jesus more than the place where you are right now. He said, we're going to hold the crusade in an open field where the gangs come and trade drugs. I said, praise the Lord. He said, there are gangs, prostitutes, alcoholics, drug addicts, everywhere. And I said, every one of them needs Jesus. 15,000 people ended up on the field. 15,000. 15. Okay. And in the beginning of the, the services, people were frightened because they knew that the gangs were there. And no one came forward when the invitation was given. I said, we're not going to put up with this. 
और हमने कहा कि हम उनसे ऐसे ही नहीं पेश आएंगे सेटन रोई शैतान इन द नेम ऑफ जीसस क्राइस्ट यीशु मसीह के नाम से टेक योर हैंड्स ऑफ दिस पीपल देयर इन लोगों पर से अपने हाथ को अभी हटा ले I preached on the power of the blood of Jesus. मैंने प्रवीण मसी के लहू के सामान के विषय में प्रचार किया. To save and wash us clean from our sin. जो हमें धोकर के शुद्ध करता है हमारे पापों से. And even before I gave the invitation that night. उस रात्रि मुझे लोग को दावत देने से ही पहले. From this massive crowd. ये बड़े भीड़ के संख्या के लोग में. Came one gang leader. उन जो थे जो बदमाश लोग के दर्द उनमें से एक अगुआ अपने अपने आप बिन बुलाए उठकर उस भीड़ में से आगे को आया अब यहाँ आगे को आया उन्होंने ऐसे अपने घुटनों में होकर प्रवेश मसीह के साथ अपने हाथों को उठाया I said we're not going to let the devil get away with this. हमने उनसे कहा कि हम ये मौका नहीं देंगे कि द्रोही शैतान अपना प्लान पूरा करे. This one man was under conviction from the Spirit of God. ये एक व्यक्ति परमेश्वर के आत्मा के द्वारा एहसास दिलाया गया. And when I said Satan, और जब मैंने कहा द्रोही शैतान, take your hands off of these people. अपने हाथों के इन लोगों पर से उठा ले. The other gang leader started coming. without knowing God's grace and forgiveness no es la voluntad de dios que nadie perezca sin haber conocido el amor y la gracia de dios and there are many of you here tonight y hay muchísimos de ustedes aquí en esta noche who have never bowed your knee to the son of god que nunca antes han doblado su rodilla ante el hijo de dios but tonight pero en esta noche, the Holy Spirit, el Espíritu Santo, the presence of the living God, la presencia del Dios viviente, as He's moving in this place, mientras se sigue moviendo en todo este lugar, is touching hearts, está tocando corazones. There's going to be joy in heaven tonight. Habrá mucho gozo en el cielo, because there are going to be many of you who are going to surrender your heart. And your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Porque muchos de ustedes le estarán rindiendo sus vidas al Señor Jesucristo. Prostitutes, prostitutas, gang members, delincuentes, drug addicts, drug addicts, alcoholics, alcoholics. God loves you. Dios te conoce. God cares about you. Can deliver you. Oh my God! Oh, I am the power of God. Yes, follow you. Oh, we are the children of the Lord. Yes, alabado sea Dios. We're not going to let the devil get away with this. Yo no voy a dejar a Satanás que se burle de esto. 
Satan! Satanás! Take your hands off of these people now! Quita tus manos de esta gente. Now! Take your hands off of these people 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 now! The little church that had 50 members grew to over 5,000 just like that. There is power in the name of Jesus. And when the fire of God is burning in the heart of the church, there will be a spirit of conviction. You don't have to keep telling people that they're sinners, they already know it. You lift up the name and the presence of Jesus. Amen. And the Holy Spirit will bring conviction. The last time I checked, there was no opening in the Trinity. Some of us pastors and leaders want to be the Holy Spirit for people. But there's no opening in the Trinity. It's not the Father, the Son, and Mike. It is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the work of the Holy Spirit is to convict you and me when we, have, when we have moved away from the purpose and plan of God. We need the fire of conviction burning again. People loved being with Jesus because he was full of compassion. Where is the compassion of the church today? We have gotten so cold. And we see people who are lost. Where is our burden and compassion for them? We must have that. 
the Lord is gracious and full of compassion. Slow to anger and great in mercy. That's what Psalm 145 says. Have we lost our compassion? We want to judge one another. We want to judge other people. But to do that, we must make God get off the judgment seat and we sit down on it. He is the judge, not you or me. Amen. God is the judge, the righteous judge. And you know when God wants to measure how how great a Christian you are. How mature in our faith we are. And God takes out the tape measure. You know what a tape measure is? But measure is not and he's going to measure how great of a Christian I am. God does not put the tape measure around my head. Oh, you know a whole lot of theology. You know a whole lot of big Bible words. You know a whole lot of things. That's not what God does. He puts the tape measure around your heart to see how big your heart is. To see how great your heart is. And when we have the heart of God. And we are burning with the fire of the heart of God. We will not be satisfied that one person in Suba dies and goes to hell. I shared this with a few people somewhere oh in the youth meeting I was 19 years old the first time I came through the doors of a church my family was totally and completely dysfunctional my father was an alcoholic, abusive to my mother and to the nine children. I didn't know anything about God. I was involved in everything you could think of. At that time, I had beautiful long hair. Why are you laughing at that? <laughs> it's true, I'm telling you, I had beautiful long hair. Way down to here, I was a musician. A man musician tha, saad baan bajane wala. Drugs, nasiri padar. Alcohol, sarab. And wickedness was what I was involved in. A kapti pad, jin mein main saamil. I was a sinner and I knew it. Main main baapi tha, a main janta tha. And I thought everybody in the church was the same way. A main sochta tha ki gilte ghar mein bhi sab waise hi hai. Hypocrites. Hypocrites. That's what I thought. 
I didn't want anything to do with the church. The only time I saw the church was once a year at Christmas time. Some people from a church would come and give my family some food and, and uh, some, a, a basket of food and some clothes for us. But none of them talked to me about Jesus. None of them went to my alcoholic father and said, there is a power that can break the bondage over your life. They just gave us some food and gave us some clothes and the church thought that I would connect the dots meaning I would somehow automatically think to thank God but I didn't I never connected the dots because the Bible says how will they know unless someone tells them and no one told me when I married my wife at 19 and she was 18 she had grown up in the church and her mother wanted us to come to a church service with her I did not want to go 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 but to get her mother off of my back I said okay I remember the day that I walked onto the, the, the grounds of that church. My wife was beside me. I had a t-shirt on. Blue jeans. Flip flops. My long beautiful hair. <laughs> <laughs> my baby and the smell of alcohol on my breath and I walked up to the church and I was going to go up the steps just like this to go in the door of the church and I kept my head down like this. And my long, flowing, beautiful hair covered my face. You can tell how proud I was at one time of having some hair. <laughs> Standing on the steps, at the top of the steps, was an old auntie named this S.L. Tuttle, this Tuttle. <laughs> this, this Tuttle. What is it? Oh. Her name was Miss S.L. Tuttle. <laughs> She was standing up here like this, greeting people as they came in. And I would have my head down like this. And I kind of looked up like that. I said, oh, 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 how am I going to get by this old lady? Because she's not going to appreciate my long, flowing, beautiful hair. <laughs> Or the smell of alcohol. 
Now, Brother Ami is going to be me. And I'm going to be Miss Tuttle. Oh, okay. <laughs> and, uh, put your hand down and you walk up the steps. That's, he's me. And I was trying to figure out how I was going to get through the door without having to deal with this old auntie. When all of a sudden she said, Oh, and I thought to myself, Here we go. This is exactly what I was expecting from the church. Come here. <laughs> You're not finished yet. <laughs> Even though your hair's not long and flowy like mine, but you're doing a good job. <laughs> so my head was down, and she said, Oh. She came close to me like this. And she said, I thought, I don't know what's going to happen. And she said, We're so glad you're here. We've been praying for you. We've been praying for you. Jesus loves you so much. People listen to me. I can't explain what happened. But my stone cold heart was broken in a million pieces standing on the steps of that church. And I felt the fire of the love of God for the first time in my life. I felt the fire of God's love for me. And I just melted into the concrete right there on the on the porch. I couldn't explain anything that was happening. I went in the church service. I don't know what the preacher preached on. I have no idea what his wonderful servant was. Sometimes people aren't waiting on a wonderful sermon. They're waiting on the church to demonstrate the passionate love of God for the lost. And God loves the lost. God so loved this world that he gave his only son. That whosoever. 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 Would believe in him. Would not perish. Would have everlasting life. And the fire of God's love just consumed me at that moment. I went to the altar. I took everything out of my pockets and laid it on the altar. I said, God, you can have my life. It belongs to you. Praise God. I know who you are. I don't know anything about you, God. But I feel your love for me today. This is what the world needs 
them. The burning heart of God's love for this world. Yes, there is evil in this world. Yes, there is wickedness in this world. Yes, we are surrounded by sinners. But when the fire of the love of God is burning in our hearts, just like this auntie, God will use us to bring people to the feet of Jesus. Do you know that when Jesus was dying on the cross, he stopped dying for the sins of the world just long enough to reach out to one sinner that was hanging on the cross next to him. That's how great the love of Christ is. And you remember Jesus is having a conversation with the man on the cross. Stay there, stay up there. I'm sure there were people down here seeing what was happening. And they see Jesus talking to the man. I'm sure there must have been some people who were thinking. Oh, Jesus has given him hell right now. Oh, he's getting exactly what he deserves. He's getting exactly what he deserves. Jesus is telling him what a filthy, rotten, sorry person he is. I'm sure Jesus must be telling him that on the cross. Don't you think that's what he's telling him? Look, Jesus is talking to the man. I can't hear what he's saying. But he must be telling him what a sorry person he is. He must be talking about how despicable and terrible he is. I'm glad to know that Jesus does not like that man any more than I do. Some of us have our people that we want hanging on the cross, right? People we don't like. Sure, Jesus must be saying, you're going straight to hell. But this man, you know what he was saying to Jesus? Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. Jesus doesn't say the only kingdom that you're going to experience is the kingdom of darkness. He didn't say that. What did Jesus say? Today, you will be with me Mere in paradise. paradise me. Oh, what a savior we have. And the fire of compassion burned in the heart of Jesus even when he was dying on the cross. Did he curse the soldiers who crucified him? Did he? No. What did he say? Father, forgive them. 
for they don't know what they're doing. This is the fire of compassion that burns in the heart of God for a lost world. John the Baptist said, I'm baptizing you with water for the repentance of sin. But there's one coming after me who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. And when the fire of conviction comes upon the church, we will not be satisfied with our sin and when the fire of compassion comes on the church we will not be satisfied that the lost are going to hell we need the fire of consecration the fire of consecration in Romans chapter 12 Paul said I beg you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice do you know what a living sacrifice they would put the sacrifice on the altar and the, the fire would consume the sacrifice some of us in here you have come sometimes and put your offering of yourself on the altar and then taken it back with you when you go stay here stay on the altar until you are consumed by the fire Amen. stay on the altar until your life is consumed by the fire of God consecration the fire of consecration needs to burn again in the heart of God you remember in the Old Testament with Elijah when he called all of the prophets of Baal up on the top of Mount Carmel remember anybody remember that story say I remember Say, I remember. I remember. 450 prophets of Baal. 400 prophets of Ashram. They climb up on top of Mount Carmel. And Elijah calls all the people in Israel to come to the top of the mountain. And they climb up on the, there had been a drought for three years, not a drop of water, a drop of rain. The Bible says that everything dried up, every brook, every creek, everything dried up. Even animals were dying in the fields. A total and complete drought. The crops died. The animals were dying. No water anywhere. Now listen to me. I have been to the top of Mount Carmel many times. At least eight times to the top of Mount Carmel. And there is nothing up there. They have a spot that is dedicated to where Elijah confronted the prophets of Baal. But when I thought about all of Israel gathering up there, and all of these prophets of Baal, you remember Elijah said, we're going to build an altar. And 
And the prophets of Baal, you, when you put a bull on top of the altar. But don't set the wood on fire. And you call on the name of your God. And then I will put a bull on the altar. And I will call on the name of the Lord my God. And the God that answers by fire, let him be God. And so all day long the prophets of Baal danced around and did everything to try to get some spark of fire. Of nothing. Nothing. They cut themselves and did everything they could to try to convince their God to light the fire. And nothing happened. In the evening, Elijah said to all of the people, now it's my turn. All of you come close. He put the bull on the altar. And then you what he did? He went and he got barrels of water. You remember the story? If you remember the story, lift up your hands. He got barrels of water and poured it on top of the, the bull. He said, bring me another barrel of water. Pour it on the altar. Bring me another barrel of water. Pour it on the altar. Bring me another barrel of water. Pour it on the altar. The Bible says there was so much water poured over that bull that it ran down into the, the, uh, the, the, the ditch that was the first time I went to the top of Mount Carmel this came to my mind I looked around at this barren place and I remembered the drought that had struck Israel and I said where did they get the water to pour on the altar have you ever thought about that I said where did they get the water to pour on the altar for God to set the, the altar on fire there was a drought and the Spirit of God spoke to me on top of Mount Carmel and said this is where they got the water the people when they came to the top of the mountain they, each one of them brought what little bit of water they had left in their homes and so when they went to the people they said God is going to answer by fire Elijah said but first God's people must put something on the altar that he will consume. Give me some of your water. So he went to every one of the people there. Come on, come on, you've been holding on to your water because you're afraid that God's not going to provide. I need some of your water. Oh, you can't get any of mine, preacher. I don't have any time. I don't have any money. I don't have anything. I'm holding on to what little bit I got because I don't know what's going to happen in the future. 
कि हमारे पास पैसा नहीं हमारे पास और कुछ तो नहीं हम जानते नहीं कि भविष्य में क्या कुछ होगा God said, but I need some water to put on the altar to show the people what consecration means. So you don't live in fear. You don't live in fear. I'm not giving my water. I'm not giving my time. I'm not giving myself. And Elijah says, if you want to see the fire of God come down, then you give some of the water that you got in your And you will see the fire of God come down in power. This is a word for the church today. Because the church has been living in fear too long. But God did not give us a spirit of fear. But a spirit of power, of love, and sound judgment. That's what God's given us. I feel the presence of the Lord here right now. Because in just a few moments, the same fire that came down on Mount Carmel is going to fall on this place right here. Praise God. But the devil is a liar. Because God's people are going to rise up in the power of the fire of His Spirit again. I believe it. Praise God. Hamara vishwasi ki parmeshwar ki log uske atma ke aag ke samarche utkhara honge. And we're going to see the Spirit of God come down upon young people. Aage parmeshwar ki atma unke upar unde raja. Upon old people. Nawzwan par, boodhe par. I am so thankful to God. मैं परमेश्वर को इतना अभारी हूँ। There are two times in the Bible. कि दो बार पवित्र शास्त्र में। God said, प्रभु ने कहा, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. कि मैं अपने आत्मा को हर एक मनुष्य पर उन्हें लूँगा। And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. तुम्हारे बेटा और बेटी भविष्यवाणी करें। And your young men shall see visions. तुम्हारे नौजवान दर्शन को देखें। And your old men shall dream dreams. तुम्हारे बड़े बूढ़े लोग स्वप्न को देखेंगे। Upon my handmaids will I pour out my spirit in that day, says the Lord. This is that day. This is that day. This is that day. I'm going to ask you to stand across the auditorium. Come on and stand with me, church. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the hour and the moment. I'm going to ask the word. 
worship team that comes, we lead, they lead us into the presence of God. We need the fire of God in here, especially as preachers. Because we are so good at going through services and having services and waiting on the next thing to happen. The next thing that needs to happen is we need to bow our knee and let the fire of God fall on us first. Hallelujah! We need the fire of God in our marriages. We need the fire of God in our children. Many of during this pandemic, many marriages have just fallen apart. I talked to some Christian people. And they say, I don't love my husband or my wife anymore. What's wrong with you? You can't love them in your own strength. You can't love them in your own strength. But when the fire of God is burning in you, His love will reach them. All across this congregation. Look at me. Because this is where the devil wants to really distract your attention. And get your mind and heart away from God. Last Sunday, not the last Sunday before I came here, I had a dream. I was sleeping in my bed. It was in the middle of the night. And I had a dream. I dream I was on a platform like this preaching. And there were hundreds of people out in front. I started preaching about the cross. And the power of Christ's blood to save us. And the people stood up like you're standing now. And they lifted their voice and started singing about the cross of Jesus. Then I preached about the resurrection. And more people came. And when I preached about Jesus risen from the dead, the people stood up like you're standing. And they began to sing about the risen Christ. And then, more people came. And then I started to preach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And I only got a little bit into the message. And the enemy attacked me. I woke up in my bed. Pouring sweat. Shaking and burning up with a fever. I recognize this is an attack from the enemy. I got up and went in the kitchen. And I began to call upon the name of the Lord. And I said, God, I am your servant. And the blood of Jesus has power over all the works of the enemy. Wash me in your blood, Jesus. Pray of this wickedness that has come and attacked me. Because your people need the power of the Spirit of God more than ever. And the Spirit of God delivered me like this. And I realized before I went back to bed that the devil does not want Acts or Job fulfilled. The devil does not want to see the Spirit of God poured out upon all flesh. Because the Bible says in the last 
days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. And the devil knows it. When God begins to pour out his spirit and fire on all flesh, that the days, his days, are numbered. Because when we are filled with the spirit of God, our families will be different. Our marriages will be different. Our children will be different. Our community will be different. Our lives will be different. And I believe that this church and the other churches in this community filled with the Spirit of God are going to be a part of the end time harvest where God brings in the sheaves and brings in the lost. And when they come through the door and they don't look like you or act like you or they have long flowing beautiful hair what are you going to do? They're lost. But if the fire of God is burning inside of you, you're going to look right past that. And you're going to see a soul that needs Jesus. 